Well, you know, Justin Trudeau is going to try to hope that politics and diplomatic nicety trump the truth. What he always does is he jumps off a cliff and hopes that his British or American friends will put a big mattress there underneath him to catch him when he falls. It doesn't work that way. My, the outtake on this is that the Americans realize that there is a nuanced problem. The, the difference between the Americans and the Canadians, the Canadians seem to be flying by the seat of Justin Trudeau's pants. The Americans recognize the complexity of the issue. This isn't simply um, a matter of accusing India for political gain. Look, the San Francisco consulate has been attacked twice by Sikh extremists, by Khalistani militants. The Americans understand at this point that the Khalistani militants are engaged in organized crime, and therefore they recognize that not all is as meets the eye. That's why the Indians seem to also be much more willing to trust the American investigation, because the American investigation is much less designed to protect a single prime minister, and much more designed to get to the heart of the matter. Look, my take on this is Justin Trudeau is nearing his ninth year in office. When he came into office, there was a lot of optimism that he would be a fresh face. The reason why his popularity has plummeted, and not simply on this issue, is because he has consistently put himself above the interests of Canada. He has consistently showed himself to be a lightweight. And in this situation, what we have is Justin Trudeau, in a fit of peak more than a year ago, decided to spark a diplomatic crisis, and he may honestly have not realized the import of what he was accusing. Well, India stood up for itself, and rather, look, the first rule of holes is when you're in a hole, stop digging. And you know, it seems that Justin Trudeau is intent on digging his way to China at this point, simply because he's not going to acknowledge his own mistake, because he's putting his ego above the national interests of Canada. Well, look, the Indians have every right to be angry for two reasons. First of all, when I read many of the leaks, and some of the leaks were also published in the Washington Post not too long ago, there was a lot of assumptions made, two or three degrees of separation. What the Canadians are essentially saying is, this plot goes to the top of the Indian government because some of those who have conspired are two or three degrees removed from Prime Minister Modi. Well, you know what? I've done this game before, where I've found that I'm two or three people removed from the presidents of most countries on Earth. That doesn't mean that when I get a speeding ticket when I'm driving, that somehow the government of China or the government of Turkey or the government of South Africa is responsible. That's the type of logic we're dealing with. When they don't have the evidence, the Canadians seem to make it up and say, hey, look, we're Westerners. you got to believe us. And that doesn't fly in India, the world's largest democracy. Frankly, it doesn't fly in the global south or anywhere else in the world. It doesn't fly in the United States. That's where the Canadians are making their mistake. But let's look at this from another perspective. You know, from an American perspective, what the Canadians are accusing the Indians of doing isn't much different from what the Pakistanis accused the United States of doing when we killed Osama bin Laden. And you know what? Maybe the question the Pakistanis should have asked is why were we harboring a master terrorist? And the fact of the matter is, Canada, through initially fraudulent immigration chains, sorry, first, Canada, through initially fraudulent immigration claims and then chain immigration, has set itself up to be a money laundering and terror financing, terror supporting hub. And, you know, many Americans, many Canadians may not understand who the, what the Khalistan movement is. But when you, look, link, when you think back on Air Canada, when you think back on Air India 182 back in 1985, this group is potentially as deadly and as vicious as Al Qaeda. Justin Trudeau needs to be asking, why am I protecting these people? 
You know, this is one of the problems. First of all, one of the frustrations with Justin Trudeau is when he got himself in a corner, he tried to expose American intelligence. Now, when you, as a former consumer of American intelligence, it, as a former consumer of American intelligence, Justin Trudeau's accusations didn't make sense. When the Americans know something ahead of time, we will forewarn the government of an impending assassination, not just with our friends. We've actually done it with the Iranians before more than two decades ago. What happened in Canada, in Surrey, was that you had what essentially seemed to be a organized crime hit, a seek on seek uh, gang violence episode. And the Americans, after the fact, said, you know, there, we have a lot of chatter on this. No smoking gun, but you can look through our chatter. Justin Trudeau, as the lightweight he is, said, oh, the Americans are giving us intelligence with a nod and a wink. If the Americans are doing the, uh, if this is coming from American intelligence, it has to be right. That's not the way intelligence works. Basically, if there was any evidence there, the Canadians would have known about it in advance. The fact that there was not intelligence there shows that Justin Trudeau is mischaracterizing what the United States said. And now what he's trying to do is try to get the United States government into a corner to try to defend him. Well, we're not going to do that. That's politicization of intelligence. And that's why the CIA would very much like the five eyes to become four eyes if Canada is going to play this sort of game. So that's one of the problems. You look at some of the other evidence. Again, it doesn't make sense. So the Canadians are, I'm sorry, the Canadians are saying that India is controlling the mafia. This, this is reminiscent of how JFK, and John F. Kennedy conspiracy theorists said that the mafia was, and the CIA were working fist in glove with maybe even the Castro administration in order to kill John F. Kennedy. So that doesn't make sense. And then when you actually look at the nitty gritty, well, if the mastermind of this is an Indian prison, that's another problem we have out there. The Canadians seem to be making an issue whenever Justin Trudeau is in hot political water and enough is enough. I mean, there's the old parable about the boy who cried wolf. I mean, Justin Trudeau is crying wolf every day. If Canadians don't trust him, why should Indians or Americans? Well, you know, Justin Trudeau is going to try to hope that politics and diplomatic nicety trump the truth. What he always does is he jumps off a cliff and hopes that his British or American friends will put a big mattress there underneath him to catch him when he falls. It doesn't work that way. Our relations with India are way too important. They're way too bipartisan. They date back to the George W. Bush administration, and they're, only, they're the only thing that really unites George W. Bush, Barack Obama, and Donald Trump and Joe Biden. That's an amazing relationship. To try to drag that down, to try to burn the house down in a fit of peak, in a Justin Trudeau temper tantrum, isn't mature leadership on the global stage. So what I suspect the Biden administration will do is what we did last time. Say, we have our own ongoing investigation. We're very happy with the Indian cooperation. And perhaps our investigation isn't pointing in the same direction, which the Canadians are claiming theirs is. Well, first of all, when it comes to the American elections, I don't have a horse in this race personally, because I'm not particularly a fan of either candidate. But as an analyst rather than an advocate, I worry what a Kamala Harris administration would mean for this issue. On one hand, Kamala Harris will sometimes say, well, I have Indian background. But on the other hand, the problem with Kamala Harris is that her deflection to the progressive base will lead to an unleashing of the worst instincts of the State Department. So what I worry about is while we have more mature leadership with the Biden administration, uh, more seasoned leadership, under a Kamala Harris administration, we could be much more like Justin Trudeau. And that's why I hope that this issue is resolved before Kamala Harris or Donald Trump take their oath of office on January 20th. You know, what I find unfortunate is whenever there is, 
look, there are so many issues in the world today. And whenever we have these multilateral summits, the G20, for example, where this first erupted with Justin Trudeau's accusations, what Canada does and what Justin Trudeau through his ego does is he completely derails the agenda when there are so many more important issues at stake. And that is what is becoming unfortunate. That's what's also causing a great deal of frustration with Justin Trudeau outside of New Delhi. And the fact of the matter is, whenever we try to work on something, whenever the world tries to get together to address trade, to address climate change, there's Justin Trudeau saying, hey, look at me. And I mean, the world's had enough of that.